Good morning, boys and girls. Welcome back to Mr. Herring's fifth grade social studies class. Uh, today we're going to be comparing the colonial regions if you're not in class. Uh, our journal entry today was um, comparing colonial regions and it was placed on page 39 in our journal. Uh, we're going to go ahead and get started. Uh, so today, learn it. I can compare the New England middle and southern colony by highlighting characteristics of each on a colonial regions chart. Uh, my essential question is, how did the British colonies lay the foundation of our modern economic system? All right. Uh, before we get started, there are some very important vocabulary terms uh, that go with this part of the unit. Uh, of course, the cash crop is a crop that is grown to sell rather than been used by the grower. Uh, this is probably one of the biggest driving forces of uh, the 13 colonies or the uh, Europeans' interest in the colonies was those cash crops they were able to get. <clears throat> the free enterprise system, which allowed the colonies to pretty much trade with whoever they wanted to within the colonies, uh, and that's just an economic system which people are free to start their own businesses or do whatever they want. Uh, indentured servant, which made up probably 75% of the workforce and the, um, or 50%, I should say, of the workforce or the population in the colonies. That's a person who agrees to work for a set period of time without pay. Uh, in exchange for necessities such as transportation, food, or clothing, and shelter. Uh, a monarch, you know, is a ruler, the king, the queen, uh, prince, princess, dutch, duke. Uh, and then profit. Profits are money a business earns after all the expenses are paid, and there were lots of profits to be made from the colonies uh, by the Europeans. Uh, slavery, it's the practice of owning and controlling people against their will, and we know this is probably the dark spot on our country's history. Uh, however, it was a huge part of the history uh, in all of the world, um, and it certainly made its way into the New World as well. Uh, so this is the notes we had in class. These are available on the table of contents uh, in the digital or the online journal. Uh, you'll need to access these. Uh, this is the completed notes. Uh, students in class were filling these in as we went through, uh, so you'll need to get uh, either print out a copy or I can give you a copy when you get back to class. All right, so let's go ahead and start um, discussing exactly where this all started. Of course, you know, we're, Great Britain is over here, this island, um, and the colonies are way over here, 3,000 so miles away. Uh, Christopher Columbus sailed and found the West Indies and the Bahamas, and then that led to a firestorm of exploration and the colonization of this land over here on the east coast of what is today the United States. Um, First happened in 1607 when Jamestown was established. That's the first, you know, permanent English settlement, and then it continues up into the late 1700s uh, with the with the colonization and foundation of Georgia. Um, the colonial e economic practices, uh, the northern colonies, um, some small family farming, uh, but the land is mostly too rocky, and growing season is too short for large farm agriculture. Uh, they cut down trees for lumber, they engage in shipbuilding, uh, they fish for cod and mackerel, they even hunt whales. It's a very popular uh, industry in the northern colonies, the New England colonies. Uh, but mostly the northern colonists engage in trade. Uh, the rugged New England you know, coast provides many fine uh, bays and harbors. Uh, the New Englanders become great traders known to the rest of the, the world as Yankees, uh, probably from Indian word meaning uh, you know, the, the light skin or pale skin. Uh, to avoid England's navigation laws and taxes, though, the Americans soon become expert smugglers, if you believe that. Uh, they were, even back then, they were trying to avoid paying taxes and became really good smugglers. The New Englanders developed the, the triangular trade route, which we will discuss in more detail tomorrow. Uh, and the dangers of the sea uh, keep, fish, uh, keep profits really high. Um, but wealthy, you know, the wealth is fairly low. Um, you know, there's pirates, there's all kind of dangers in the sea, so it's, it's, it's very, very high profit. Uh, the Yankee traders, they had to cope with the storms, the natural hazards of the Atlantic Ocean, um, the English revenue, the ships patrolling the Atlantic trying to enforce the navigation acts, and they also have to deal with the pirates in the Caribbean. Uh, some of the most famous pirates, you know, you might know, like Edward Teach, you know him as Blackbeard, or William Kidd, the famous Captain Kidd. And there's even a female, Mary Reed, uh, she was a famous female pirate. <clears throat> uh, the government, you know, they had um, the, only the Puritan men uh, could vote. Uh, later, you know, they let all men vote. 
uh, in both in most of the northern or the New England colonies. Um, the middle colonies, you know, like New York, Pennsylvania, um, a little bit different. Uh, the settlers here develop a large farm agriculture. Uh, the family-run farms grow mostly grains, wheat, corn, rye, and barley. Uh, the middle colonies are cut through with numerous wide, slowly river running rivers, which allow the farmers to easily move their produce to the sea, uh, which is good for shipping, uh, transportation. There's a longer growing season here that further north, uh, the land is more fertile than in the New England, especially in the Pennsylvania area, which allows farmers to produce surplus for export. Uh, soon about 60% of England's bread supply will originate in these colonies, in the middle colonies, uh, which become known as the bread colonies. Uh, fine harbors such as New York and Philadelphia promote trade. Uh, some fur trading with the Indians is practiced. <clears throat> and the government here, um, only a governor appointed by the British king uh, could choose other officials and enforce the laws. Uh, and then the British king approved and appointed a governor. Uh, male property owners were the only ones voted uh, for general assembly members, which was, you know, kind of kind of a conflict uh, for the for the middle colonies. <clears throat> and then the southern colonies, uh, they had great forests, which which produce incredible amounts of lumber, which allows for naval stores. You know, uh, they soon ship a lot of lumber north to the middle colonies and northern colonies. Uh, there's some fur trading, but not very much with the Native Americans there. Uh, the fertile soil and a long growing season result in the growing of uh, plantation economy. This is where things boom in the southern colonies. It's all about plantation, huge uh, cash crops. The major cash crops there are tobacco, sugar, rice, uh, indigo. Um, but there is a serious shortage of labor. Um, for all these huge plantations, there's just a serious shortage of labor, and that is solved um, by uh, indentured servants at first. Um, these people are sometimes criminals, though they're mostly poor whites from England, Scotland, Ireland, and Europe. Um, they sign these indentured contracts, uh, agree to work four to seven years in return for passage to America. Um, about half the white immigrants to the English colonies come as indentured servants. 10% um, of the indentured servants are women, if you can believe that. But later, um, as the indentured servant contracts begin to expire, um, less and less people are engaged in indentured servitude. And what happens is the economy turns to slavery. Uh, the first African slaves are introduced in Jamestown around 1619, but slavery is soon a fact of life in all 13 colonies. Um, the Indians sometimes are held in bondage even. Uh, the, the colonists would capture Native Americans and take them into slavery. Uh, Europeans could be enslaved for certain crimes of uh, their offenses. And by the 18th century, the late 1700s, Africans formed the vast majority of slavery in America. Um, due to the long growing season and labor intensive crops, uh, slavery becomes very, very popular in the Southern institution. And by 1775, there are about 400,000 slaves in the 13 colonies. Uh, three quarters of them, or 75%, are in the Southern colonies. Um, slavery is not prohibited in the colonies by the English law, custom, or even religion, and the king has no say in it. Um, manufacturing in the colonies, uh, like other European countries, England uh, practices the theory of mercantilism um, and forbids most forms of manufacturing. They don't want anybody manufacturing anything in the colonies. They want to buy all the raw materials, bring them back to Europe, uh, make goods and then sell them back to the colonies. It's kind of a racket. Um, other obstacles uh, to industrialization, the inland road system is poor. There's not a very good road system. Uh, there's few skilled workmen in the colonies and there's a lack of, of money. However, some forms of manufacturing still exist. Uh, New England has a preposterous shipbuilding industry. Although ships are never mass produced, uh, many small businesses exist such as textile shops like um, cloth and um, yarn and things like that. Uh, there's blacksmiths as well. Americans manufacture some firearms. Most of these are special weapons called Pennsylvania long rifles, uh, later become the Kentucky long rifle. Uh, the long rifles are accurate but slow loading and, and the British view them as colonial tools rather than weapons of war which allow them to protect themselves from the natives. <clears throat> the society overall, the population in 13 colonies, 97% uh, of whom are farmers, uh, they tend to have a high birth rate. Uh, by 1650, the population is about 50,000. 
And by 1775, there's two and a half million people. Uh, the education in the colonies. Colonists tend to be better educated than folk in the mother country. Uh, in 1642, Massachusetts passes a, um, an education law. Uh, education is considered necessary for Bible reading, of course. Um, as we all know that religious freedom was one of the big um, proponents for settling the colonies. Uh, colleges are established. America is the only one of England's colonial domains to, to actually have colleges. Harvard is established in 1636. Uh, Yale in 1701, Pennsylvania in 1751, then we get Columbia in 1754. Uh, papers, newspapers and libraries are established. Ben Franklin establishes a library in Philadelphia. He also publishes Poor Richard's Almanac. Um, the first newspaper, The Public Occurrences uh, from Boston uh, in 1690 uh, is established. Uh, the religion in the colonies, there is no single dominant religion. Um, about 500,000 belong to the Church of England uh, in 1775. Um, you've got New England con Congressionalists, you've got Presbyterians, you've got Dutch and German Reformed churches, um, you've got Quakers, Lutherans, uh, Baptists, Methodists, Catholics, and Jews. Uh, most colonies were established with religious toleration in mind, except for Massachusetts. Um, America is really the frontier. You know, it's dangerous um, and difficult, um, and seldom is there a time. Um, for religious debates. Uh, there's not a big war between the religions. Um, there is some science in the colonies. Of course, Ben Franklin is America's great native and genius. Uh, he experiments with electricity. He invents bifocal glasses. He invents lightning rods. He develops Franklin stoves. Um, John Winthrop, uh, he makes an early observation on sunspots and planetary movements. Um, there's lots of science. Um, but the, there's, a, there's some superstition that goes on the colony that's not usually talked about. Um, and we have something called the Salem Witch Trials, which occur uh, in the 1690s. Um, a hysteria sleeps about witchcraft, and hundreds are accused of witchcraft. Twenty men and women are convicted and hanged, um, even though no one is really burned at the stake. That's just a, a, a myth. But um, accusations finally go away with some of the religious leaders stepping up and putting an end to it. Um, but that same movement will sweep across Europe as well. Uh, and, but in Europe, the, it causes the death of thousands. Uh, so overall, the 13 colonies uh, were very, very successful uh, for Great Britain. Um, that, of course, comes to a screeching halt um, in the 17, mid-1700s um, with the exhaustion of the king by the people of the colonies. Um, the taxes, over taxation and things like that start to come to a head. Uh, and it all comes to an end for the uh, British government. Uh, but those are the colonies uh, in a nutshell. Um, we will be gluing this into page 39 if you were able to print them at home. Uh, and tomorrow we will discuss um, the slave trade and how slavery becomes such a huge uh, factor in the colonies. All right, we'll see you guys tomorrow. Enjoy your day.